playing movies on your Nintendo Switch. So this is what it's going to look like when they release everything for it. Here's the original Italian job. In handheld mode, now let's put it in TV mode. And there it is, now on TV mode up there. Picture's lovely, remember this is an old film so it's not going to be as good as a modern film. But nice and clear and great that you can go between handheld and TV mode. There we go, you see? You can actually get your switch to turn on your TV when you hold down the home button on either the Pro Controller or the Joy-Con. So if we hold this down now, you see there that it's automatically turned on the TV and it's gone to the Nintendo Switch, like so. And then, when we turn off the TV, we can also get it to turn off the Switch. So if we get the TV remote control, and turn off the TV, you will see that the light will go out here and it will put the switch into sleep mode. There we go. And it also works with the Joy-Con controller as well. Now, if you're wondering where this feature is, we just need to go down to settings, and you just need to go down to TV output and then go to match TV power state and you can either turn that off or turn it on. So when it's on, if your TV allows it, then your switch can turn the TV on and the TV can turn the switch off. And just to show you the controllers turning on the switch again when it's in handheld mode, so it's not in TV mode now, but same thing applies. You just hold down the home button for a couple of seconds. So at the moment you can see that the controllers are all off. All we've got to do is hold down the home button for a couple of seconds, and there we go, it comes on. So at the moment I've got the switch in handheld mode, you can see Zelda there. Now I want to put it in TV mode, but as you see I haven't got a Nintendo Switch dock here. But what I have got, I've got the dock and all the equipment connected to it on the other side of this wall in an AV cupboard. So what I'm going to be doing is just connecting up this little pink USB-C extension lead which goes from the dock to here. And as soon as I plug it in here you will see that the screen will go black on here. And then if you have a look up here, it's now gone onto this TV up here. So this is ideal if, for example, you've got a bit of a minimalist look and you don't want the dock and all the cables traipsed across the floor. If you're worried about it overheating, then what you can do is you can just get your little stand and then have it in there like so. Now you are limited because these pink leads are normally just up to one meter long. So your AV cupboard is gonna to have to be very close to where you're plugging your switch into. But at least then, if you only occasionally do it in TV mode, you don't have to look at all the cables and stuff on the floor. And as you can see from the symbols in the top right hand corner, it will charge while using this method and it will also allow you to have the wired connection. So whatever you normally have connected to your dock will still work when you use the USB-C extension cable. All you're doing is running the connection from the dock into your switch so it allows you to hide everything out of sight. So here's a USB-C extension cable. The male part goes into the switch tablet and then the female part goes in to the bottom of the dock. Okay, you can connect USB devices straight into the switch tablet themselves. Alternatively, you can plug them straight into the dock. But if you wanna use it straight onto the switch tablet, all you need to do is get yourself a USB-C on the go cable. So that's USB-C OTG cable on the go. And that looks like that. And what you do is you plug the male USB-C into there. And then in this instance here, I've plugged in a little USB hub and I've got a keyboard connected to it, a wireless keyboard, and also I've got my LAN adapter. And now if you have a look on screen here, you can see that when I type it up there, it goes straight into it, delete. So 
So you can use your keyboard on your Switch, but you can't use the mouse. The mouse doesn't do anything. So this trackpad over here does absolutely nothing. It's only the keyboard. If I go back to home, you can see that I have actually got a LAN connection. So I've got my flashing lights there on my LAN adapter. And you can see in that top corner there that I've got my LAN cable. So you might be wondering why would this be of any use whatsoever. Well, let's say now if you were doing Mario Kart and you were doing a LAN party, Nintendo say that you have to have it connected to a TV. Well, you don't, because if you have a USB on-the-go cable, then it thinks you are connected to the TV, because it allows you to connect the LAN adapter into it, because normally you would put the LAN adapter straight into the dock itself. So if I was to go into Mario Kart... Right, and then if you actually want to get into LAN play, so let's say a few of you are getting together and you want to go via the LAN play rather than wireless play, all you've got to do is do the left button, right button, and left click in on the analog stick, and you will see it will change from wireless play over to LAN play. LR in, and left click in, and you can see now it's gone over to LAN play. Also, by having the LAN connection, normally you're getting the best internet connection that your service will provide. So if you're doing online multiplayer on Mario Kart and you find that your Wi-Fi is dropping out, then go via the LAN cable and you know then, as long as a connection into the house is good, then you're going to be getting a good connection into the Nintendo Switch. Now you're probably already aware that you can change the order of your controllers via this screen here. So for example at the moment this is player one because there's one light, two lights here represents player two, three lights player three and four lights player four. But let's say now if we want to change the order but we don't want to actually go via this particular screen. Well there is a way of doing that so let's just go back to the home screen. Now what we can do is on each of the controllers you have a little sync button. But if you just tap that button, it will turn the controller off. Then when we turn them back on, the order we will do it in will go from player one, two, three, four. So if we want this one to be player one, we would turn this one on first. If we want this one to be player two, we would turn that one on second. So let me just show you what I mean. So let's turn this one off, just tap it like so. If you hold it down, it will go looking for the sync, but we're just tapping it on this one here. Again, just tap. And lastly, on the Pro Controller, just tap that, and now you can see they're all off. So let's say now we want the Pro Controller to be player one. All we have to do is press a button on the Pro Controller, so now that's going to be player one. Let's say we want this Joy-Con grip to be player two. There we go, so that's now player two. We want this one to be player three, and we want this one to be player four. And if you've made a mistake and you decide that this one actually wants to be player one, let's just turn this one off and turn off player one just by tapping it. And then we're going to turn this one back on. That's now number one. And turn this one on, number four. There you go. So it's nice and easy to swap them around the place.